The year Joe Biden was sworn in as president, promising a more humane immigration system, is the same year that an all-time record 1.7 million migrants have been detained at the southern border. Is that a coincidence? Thanks. So um, thanks for the question, Peter. Um, first, uh, I'll say that DHS will formally release its uh, monthly September operational update. You're telling people not to come. That's been the line for a couple months. It's been very well documented that a lot of these migrants are just released with a notice to appear or a notice to report and that something close to 80% don't appear or report. So do officials around here consider that that could be something that is attractive to migrants who figure if I can just get in, I can stay? Again, I'm not going to get into the numbers because I know that uh, you're leaning into the numbers and asking me these questions. But look, we've been very clear, and we've been clear for the last 10 months. Those who cannot be expelled are placed into immigration proceedings. President Biden does not want to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. But there's a new Fox poll that finds 83% of registered voters are noticing bills for groceries and everyday items increasing. So how is that any different than a new tax? Well, look, and when you say, can you give me a little bit more? Like, what's the... Well, the supply chain is all backed up. There are bottlenecks, empty shelves, prices going up. People are paying more. And so how is that any different than a new tax? So I, I would say this, um, you know, we are we're dealing with a historic and evolving uh, pandemic that is impacting our economy. Plan. This is why we're trying to to pass the president's domestic economic policies. And to that point, uh, the majority leader or the minority leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, wrote a letter to the president. He says we must address the global supply chain and ports crisis before Congress even considers additional social spending and taxation legislation. Is that something that you would consider? So here's the thing. Uh, uh, Jen responded to, this is the letter, the letter from McCarthy, is that we're talking about? Okay, yeah, wonderful letter. Um, uh, so she responded to this earlier, um, and uh, let me just add to this a little bit. It's a, I, I've already kind of talked about this, but there's a little bit more that I want to lean into. So under the Trump-McCarthy economy, uh, this time last year, fewer Americans were working, which is what I was just saying. Uh, job growth was flattening and families were facing down a dark winter with less economic security than ever before and a pandemic raging out of control. That was the holiday season under the McCarthy-Trump uh, uh, holiday uh, season. So that's something to remember. This was a different time a year ago. And so fast forward a year, a year from, there, from then, uh, nearly 80% adults are vaccinated. Are you saying that you th as you compare holiday season this year to holiday season last year, are you saying that if Christmas gifts don't get delivered this year because the supply chain is backed up because of bottlenecks that people are going to blame Donald Trump or are they going to blame Joe Biden? That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we're in a different place than we were a year ago. And the reason why is because the president took action. I mean, everyone gets it. The price tag isn't actually zero. These new programs do cost money, right? So why not level with American voters and say that there is a cost here, but they're aiming to do it without raising the deficit? No, we are being uh, honest with the American people. We are being front No, nope, right? it, it, it is. We are. We. It is costing. Uh, it is going to bring zero dollars to the to the deficit, and we're being very clear about that because that's what we want to make sure that we're doing. For clarity, there's a cost, but it's not to the depth. Doesn't raise the deficit. These things we do. The price tag for this legislation, Peter, is zero dollars. I'm waste to. I'm sure there have been dozens mm -hmm. who would humbly request that the president of the United States not only do a town hall, but show up either in this room or in the East Room to appear before the full press for a robust round of questions that will no doubt benefit the American public. But Brian, he takes questions all the time. I, I hear you. Just, I'm just adding my request you to know, that. Martha's here. She 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 tracks that. Yeah, <laughs> and and he's and had he's. Had a chance to ask him I get it. I get it. But this is this is a, a large White House press corps. But yes, he does take it. questions. Yes, uh, President Summoni to lead Customs and Border Protection said in his Senate uh, confirmation hearing yesterday that uh, he supported the continued use of Title 42. He also indicated it was his view that, that certain sections of the border wall should be finished. Does the president agree? Well, as, as you know, we have said that um, I, I have to look 
at the, the uh, comments. I have not seen them, so I want to make sure I, I read it within context. Uh, but we have talked about the border wall here in, in general as, as a way uh, that uh, it's been used in, in a, to, to, you know, to, to close the border, and we feel that it is a policy that doesn't work. And it's not just us. Uh, you know, experts have said that. Uh, the border wall is not, uh, is not an effective policy. You mentioned at the top that unemployment's down, wages are up, and that's a testament to the progress that President Biden has made on the economy, but there's no mention of inflation in that. And while wages are up almost four and a half percent, inflation is up five percent. So any bump in pay that people are seeing in their paycheck is getting wiped out when they're going to the store and paying more for everything. So what do you say to people who are looking at their budget and they're saying this doesn't feel like progress under President Biden? It feels like a pay cut. So, and so we're working on a wide variety of economic programs to help, right? Which is why the Build Back Better plan uh, to work out to work on our supply cha chain issues is incredibly important. The American Rescue Plan actually helped uh, the American public a lot. It did. It put checks in people's pockets. I talked about the child tax credit. Uh, I talked about the child care components in it. There was a lot there that gave some relief, uh, that gave some relief uh, to, to Americans here. So if this is an issue that the White House has been working on and aware of since February, why does it seem like this is a problem that is getting worse, not better? I would I would say this um, when it comes to the supply chain, uh, you know, it's it's a there are complexities there. Um, when you think about um, you, you know the when we learn about the the global supply chain as well, right? he understands he understands the squeeze that people are feeling, everyday Americans are feeling. That's why he's working every day to make sure that we pass his economic policies. Looking more and more like the clean energy performance program might not make it in the final version of the reconciliation package. And that was a really part of how the president planned to meet his own admission goals. So what message does that send other countries ahead of COP26? So, um, you know, President Biden reestablished U.S. leadership on day one. And, and uh, as you've heard us say, as you, as you have, have heard us say, when it comes to acting on climate change uh, every day since um, from day one, the president will, will advance uh, his climate agenda using every tool at his disposal and can make significant progress in curbing emissions, growing our economy, and good paying union jobs. And so he could do that without Congress. But if he can't get his biggest climate priority passed through Congress, how can he point to the United States being a leader on this issue? Because we have had other ways of doing that. We don't need, what we're saying is we don't need, the, we don't need Congress. We can do it without Congress, as I just, as I just laid out. Hi, great to see you. Good to see you. Go um, ahead, it's your turn. So just following up on that report you just mentioned, it, you said it does not include CEPP. Does it include a carbon tax? So, um, like I said, we are, you know, we are right now working uh, towards uh, making sure we deliver for the American public, and we're not going to. Uh, the president's been really clear. His red line is making sure that that four hundred thousand uh, oh, dollars. Oh, I'm so sorry. Climate. Oh, on climate. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, when it comes, can you say more? Uh, you you mentioned a report that you were signing yeah, that showed yeah. even if there was no CEPP uh -huh. um, passed by Congress, that we'd still be able to meet the president's uh, goals to reduce pollution. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is whether <laughs> that plan included a carbon tax or not. And the reason yep. I ask is yep. because Senator Schumer released his own plan mm -hmm. that showed if we don't have CEPP, that's one thing. But if you don't have that and you don't have the carbon tax, which Senator Manchin has opposed, um, there's really going to be a significant gap in reaching those goals. So I'm wondering when you say we have a plan that includes steps that yep. are not approved by Congress, what they are to get there. So the the the, uh, the report that I just mentioned, I, I can't speak to the specifics of it. All I can tell you is that what it laid out is saying that we can reach our goals. Um, but I, I I would have to look, we would have to check out about the, uh, the carbon tax specifically. You said earlier that the president, the White House doesn't need Congress. The president's position that he does not need Congress for transformative change in combating climate? No, he believes that, um, what I'm saying is that there are a number of pathways to meeting our emission goals and targets. That's all we're saying. Yes, would we would without Congress. We can. That's what I'm saying because we're, there are many tools that we're using to get there. When you say we don't need Congress, we can do it without Congress. Do you mean meaningful reductions of greenhouse gases or do you mean 
because what it sounded like you meant was hit the 50 to 52 percent reduction. Yeah, it's hitting our goal. It's hitting the goal that we set out. Hit 50 to 52 percent yeah, without which is, Congress at all. Which is why I uh, I uh, laid out the report. Um, Standing of that report is that that's multiple congressional pathways that would preclude the CEP program, but would have other congressional mm -hmm. legislation as part of it, which is a different thing than what you seem to be saying, which is that you don't need Congress at all to, okay. to accomplish this goal. What I'm saying, I'm speaking specifically to Build Back Better, um, that's what I was saying, because to me, to me, that's what I was hearing, is that as we're working through Build Back Better agenda um, and the bipartisan infrastructure bill, and so we're saying that there are multiple pathways. Uh, so I think what we're saying is that there are multiple congressional pathways to get to I'm that. just saying there are multiple pathways. Are you now saying that in an effort to pare down the bill, you guys would be happy if Congress does nothing? No, we're not, I'm not saying we would be. It sounded, yeah. again, like, as Justin, I think, suggested, let me, it let sounded me be, like you're saying let me, let me be clear, because clearly I'm not being clear. Let me be clear as, as a spokesperson. Uh, no, we would not be happy uh, if it was not included. We're going to continue to fight for, for those pieces in the legislation uh, to do that. And I was just citing a report that said that we're can still, we can still hit that goal.